Hello grade 9 science class, welcome back to another lecture. Here is lesson 6, titled Circuits. Uh, I talked about it a little bit, and again you guys probably have a little bit of an idea of what circuits are, but we're going to set some definitions. There's actually quite a few definitions that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and then we're going to, at the end, do some uh, drawing of circuits. So, electric circuit. Uh, an electric circuit is a complete pathway that allows electrons to flow. Uh, usually it's a, a circuit is connected by wires, but it can be connected by anything that conducts electricity. So we usually have wires throughout our walls to connect a circuit or wires within our computers or our phones to connect the circuit, wires within light bulbs and toasters and ovens to connect circuits. Uh, that is the main thing. So when I talk about an electric circuit, I'm probably just going to talk about wires. Um, an electrical charge is the buildup of a charge at a negative terminal. And we talked about this a little bit in the last lesson. Uh, when you have a buildup of charge at one terminal, uh, that's an electrical charge. And in a battery, we have negative charges at one end and positive charges uh, at the other. So that electrons want to flow that way. Uh, and essentially, when there is a circuit, electrons are allowed to flow. An electrical load, uh, key point two, is any device that changes electrical energy into other forms of energy. So I've been talking about them when I give examples, like a light bulb, a phone changes uh, electrical energy into many different types of energy, an electric stove. Um, all of these are loads. So I may, when I talk about a light bulb, I might call it an electrical load. Uh, and when I draw light bulbs, I may sometimes draw them as a load. Um, they're, uh, they're the same thing. A uh, control switch is a device that can turn the circuit on or off by closing or opening the circuit. So a light switch is a really easy way to break a circuit so that light doesn't or energy doesn't flow through and the light goes off. An oven dial or any on off switch is an example of a control switch. The source. The source of electrical energy is essentially the battery or the outlet in the wall for our purposes. Uh, mostly it's going to be the battery. And a conductor is the wire through which the electrical current flows. Uh, the energy is provided at the source and then it is used, quote unquote, by the electrical loads of the circuit as it travels from one side to the other. Uh, you can have a, uh, the energy flowing from one side to the other without doing any work but that's not usually why we you know, store energy in batteries just to let it flow out. We wanna use that energy to do some work. So this is an example of a circuit. Um, just like last time we talked about it a little bit, this guy goes up the stairs and creates some potential energy and then goes back down and goes down to the bottom and stops. Now. Um, one thing that I would say is like we would actually make a lineup of people all in different colored shorts here and once you get to the bottom that would be it you would leave the park you do not recycle electrons over and over and over again you just have a build up here and an ending over here so they would move up and they would then flow down and be gone so a circuit doesn't have uh, electrons moving again and again it has a build up on one side and a deficit on the other and then that deficit uh, is made up by those people or those electrons moving down the circuit. So current electricity, this is another big one. We talked about voltage last time as a big one. Current is another big one. So current electricity, as we know, is the continuous flow of charge in a complete circuit. Uh, electrons are pushed or repelled from the negative end of the battery along the circuit and end up at the positive end of the battery. So we talked about this, I believe, in lesson three, current electricity, the movement of electrons down a wire or a conductor. When we talk about the current, we talk about how much charge is passing a point every second. So if the wire is really large, you can generally have a lot more current. You can have a lot more electrons or charge passing that point every single second. When a wire is tiny, it is often harder for current to move through it, so you get less current. That is not the only thing. It also has to do with the type of material, uh, the temperature of the material, what it's wrapped in. There are so many different things that can affect uh, the current.
current within a wire, uh, that that is a huge piece of research that's going on right now. Uh, we measure current in amperes, and we use an ammeter to do that. So an ampere is the unit that we use to measure current. It is a rate of flow of electric charge, uh, and we use an ammeter to measure the current. So we'd use a voltmeter to measure volts. We use an ammeter to measure amps, and amps is the amount of current. Just want to say this one more time. Current is the amount of energy or charge that passes through a conductor every second. So it, it, it's moving along, and the more you have, the more current you have. We have a diagram here. You can imagine that this is a copper wire. Copper wires are the most common. And these blue dots are electrons. We have a negative end and a positive end of a conductor. And these negative charges are flowing down the wire towards the positive end. You can imagine if the wire was bigger, you could have more electrons flowing at the same time. That would increase, <clears throat> pardon me, that would increase the current. A smaller wire, you can imagine these are a single file, decreases the current. So that is key point three. So voltage versus current. Uh, voltage is the electric potential difference between two points, or two ends of a battery. So we measure that as like there is this much charge compared to this much charge. Uh, nine volts over here, there's a nine volt difference. Uh, it is the cause of the motion of electrons. So the fact that there's a buildup over here and a deficit over here, that is the cause of the, of the motion of electrons. It is the force that is responsible for that motion. The current, however, is a measure of how many of those electrons are moving at one time. So it is the effect of the voltage. The voltage is the reason for the motion. The current is the measurement of the motion. We only have current if you have a voltage. If we pull out the battery and remove the voltage, there, there's no current. There's no difference. There's no reason for electrons to flow down the wire. And that's what we need. We need voltage. That's the reason. If you have questions about this, please let me know. I feel like the first time I realized this, it was a big revelation because it's like so subtle of a difference, but it makes a huge, it really does make a difference when you understand. So please let me know if you have questions uh, about this and I'll do my best to explain. When we have a circuit, we can diagram that using symbols. So this is key point four. And this is something that we're going to need to be able to do to talk about circuits as we move through um, the rest of the unit. So uh, you can see here a straight line is just a wire, uh, while a V in a circle is a voltmeter. So if we have a diagram, let's say something like this, we can represent it in circuit symbols. So. Uh, this one we won't have to worry about as much. A cell will probably draw the battery. So the battery has many more lines essentially. The small one is the negative side and the uh, big one is the positive side. An ammeter is an A in a circle. Um, a bulb is kind of self-explanatory just like the, the filament in a bulb it's curled up with a circle around it. We have an open switch so this is a break in the circuit it's not connected while a closed switch is connected. This one would allow electricity to flow through while the open switch does not. And then we have a resistor down here. Uh, a resistor and a bulb or a load are often considered the same thing. So sometimes I might draw a bulb like this because it is a resistor uh, as well. A resistor, a load, and a bulb are all the same. They use up energy. Um, they slow the electrons down and use up that energy um, so that the to do work. So everywhere that work is needed, a resistor is needed or a bulb or a load, whatever you're fueling at that time. So let's do this together. Let's draw this together. There we go. So we have our circuit up there. We don't have to draw everything in the same spot. We can kind of just make it a a square or a rectangle and put uh, one thing on each side. So let's start with the battery. We've got a battery up top. So we're going to draw several of these. It's not even straight, but that's okay. 
and the small side is the negative side, and the big side is the positive side. After the battery, we have a switch, and that switch is closed. Switch being closed means that energy can flow through it, so a closed switch is a dot with a line with another dot at the end. You can imagine that this is like a door. It could open and close. So that's the switch. That was next. Next thing we have is an A on that thing. That must be an ammeter. That must be uh, measuring the uh, current in the circuit. So an ammeter is represented by an A with a circle around it. And then the last thing we have is a bulb. So a bulb can be drawn like that, with a couple of loops with a circle around it, and then we connect it. The next thing is back up to the battery. Okay. So A, draw the circuit diagram. Boom, that is done. B asks us if this circuit is open or closed. So we can see that the electrons would be able to flow down this wire through this switch, through this ammeter, through this load, and back to the other side of the battery. So that means it is closed. So B, this circuit is closed. And that means that electrons are allowed to flow through it. And C, if this is a closed circuit, what is the source of the potential difference? So the source of the potential difference is always the battery, right? We have negative buildup over here, while a positive buildup over here. So for C, the first blank would be battery. And what is the load? The load is the thing that uses up the energy. That would be here. So this is the load. What did I say this one is? This one is the source of the voltage. It is the reason. And then yes, this is a closed circuit. Okay, so if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, if you're feeling really comfortable with this, you can pause it and try the next two and then see if you got it right. But I'm just gonna slowly go through these next couple here. Okay. This one is a little bit more complicated. Not too bad, but a little bit. Let's start with a battery again. We've got a few things, so I'll put you know more than one thing on a line this time. Um, big, small, big, small, big, small. We have a negative end and a positive end. So that's our battery for the first part. And it looks like the first thing that we have as we go along is a bulb. I'm going to draw that bulb like this this time as a resistor because I want you to know that it's okay to do that. They are really the same thing, a load and a resistor. The next thing that I have looks like a A on a little device. That would be, to me, an ammeter. So I've done one, two, three pieces of it already. Let's start going back, I guess. I have there a switch, and the switch is lifted up. So in this case, I have an open switch, not a closed switch. I move along. Now this maybe gets a little bit tricky here, but we oh, we have one branch first. So we, it forks off, but let's do let's do one branch first. We've got this one that goes towards the the load or the bulb. So I'm going to draw that as a resistor because I can. And then breaking off before the bulb, I have a voltmeter that is a V in a funky looking device so I have the voltmeter and then these two come back together after the, the load. Uh, from here it is a free shot to the battery. So that is that. We drew the battery first, I drew the load, ammeter, an open switch and then I had this little bit of a break here where the voltmeter goes to either side of a resistor. The reason that the voltmeter is is always pretty much drawn like this is because the voltage is measured between two points in a circuit. So the voltmeter has to connect to two points while the ammeter is uh, detecting current and current is detecting is how much uh, energy flows through it. So the ammeter has to be on the circuit to understand how much energy flows through it while the voltmeter 
has to be off of it to recognize a potential difference between two different points. So there's the key. Uh, so that is A. Boom. A done. Is this circuit open or closed? In this case, we have an open switch. So this circuit is open. And that means that right now, electricity cannot flow through. If we were to close this switch up, this would work. We would power our light bulbs, no problem. C, if, uh, if this is a closed circuit, what is the source of the potential difference? Well, this is not a closed circuit. Um, so I guess I don't need to answer that. And what is the load? I guess I don't need to answer that either, but I will anyway. Again, we have the source and we have the load. And again, this would only be working if there was a potential difference um, and the circuit was closed. Let's do the next one. Okay, circuit C. First thing we have is a battery again. That's always nice. Let's do here. Negative, positive on the big side. We have an ammeter first. Excellent. Followed by a battery, sorry, not a battery, a uh, light bulb. Let's draw that as a resistor. The next thing we have is a switch. And in this case, the switch is closed. We then have another resistor along the voltmeter. And again, the voltmeter has to go across two points while the ammeter goes on the circuit. And this ends up back at our battery. Uh, is the circuit open or closed? Uh, this one is closed, which means that it will work. The load will um, use the energy to do what we want. If this is a closed circuit, what is the source? We have the source here, as always, the battery, and we have our loads. So uh, I'd like you guys to do some practice. Uh, you're going to need to memorize these circuit symbols and then you're going to need to take different diagrams. So ones that look different than those ones and turn them into um, complete diagrams like this. So even though the voltmeter or the ammeter might not look exactly the same, you'll need to be able to recognize it. The battery might not look the same. The light bulbs or the loads or the resistors, the switches, they may not look the same in every diagram, but being able to recognize what they are and then create a circuit diagram that does look the same all the time is really, really valuable. You can imagine that if you have a situation uh, that's very hard to describe, you could draw it in one of these, that is a universal language for uh, circuits, and then send it to another electrician and they would be able to understand it. So if you guys have questions, please let me know. I really appreciate you watching. I know it's a little bit of a longer one, but I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.